Right, guys. Hello. Demio, Demio, however you want to pronounce it. I'm actually really enjoying it. It is a turn-based dungeon crawling RPG tabletop adventure done in VR. It will be coming to PC as a non-VR title in the future. Uh, so we'll break the video down as I love to do with timestamps to help you find what you want to see. We'll do some gameplay later on. But I do want to go through the options, settings, and just make you aware of some things. You see, I've played the game a little bit to gather my thoughts, and there's just stuff I want to share with you. So before we get started, I just want you to think of this as an early access title. I've paid £22 for it, and I don't regret buying it, although I'm aware there's going to be updates coming for quality of life improvements as well as more content for the game. So we just need to be aware. We're kind of like early adopters, and there's some weird things for you to be aware of. So I've got the Steam version because I've got the Rift S. Now, normally, I probably would have bought it on the Oculus Store because of cross-buy, but it's not available for a few weeks yet. So if you've got the HTC Vive, the Valve Index, or a Windows Mixed Reality headset like uh, the HP Reverb, you're going to buy it on Steam anyway, and you can play with Oculus users cross-platform. That's not the problem. If you are a Quest owner, you buy it. You're going to have to wait a few weeks, but then it will, when you've bought it, you can have access to the PC version as well. That's how cross-buy works. If you've got a gaming PC, you can play it on there with Quest Link or Air Link and, yeah, get the better graphics. What you need to be aware of as a Quest owner is right now the save games are on your device. So if you uninstall it, you will lose your progress. This will change in the future. They will store it online. I assume that will be for cross-progression as you play on your PC or your Quest. It's the same account and... Yeah, your XP will continue along. But just be aware of that. It's not a big game. Even on PC, it's under 5 gig. So it's not like a major drama. You should be able to just leave it on your headset anyway. But I just wanted you guys to be aware of that. So let's go through the the options. Uh, we've got multiplayer. So it's saying quick play. That's going to try and pair me up with three other people to explore the dungeon with. I can host my own game. This room will be given its own unique code that I can share with people, which we do through join game. So I punch in the code that I've been given, and then we can play together. So that will either be co-op as two, three, or four players. We can do single player. Skirmish is a little bit different in that there are three characters, and we take turns uh, controlling it as a, as a single player game actually works really really well that's how i've played it and i really really enjoy it what i see playing with people would be a lot more fun so you can see i'm starting to rank up and get more xp as i conquer the dungeon so we can see that i'm getting items unlocked so i've got my guardian i've got a new skin for them so just a little bit of swagger to show off when you play online or with your friends so we can change the base play at the pieces masks for our virtual Avatar. We're heading to the settings. There's very little to change in graphics. We've got game. I can hide the basement, which I'm not going to do because I actually quite like being down here in this basement. Uh, we'll see you've got the tilt table. So we'll leave that enabled. That means when I use the thumbstick on the touch controller, it will tilt the table. And that can be really useful because you will get a crick in your neck if you keep staring down. So try and manipulate the table and get it into a comfortable view. We can choose through the languages and we've got audio options. So voice chat there. I haven't done multiplayer. I will just assume that the game chat is all in-game, even cross-platform. I know this can be done because I play Call of Duty Zombies with my brother. He's on PS4 and I'm on PC and yet we can talk to each other in-game. It's very important to be able to talk to your um, fellow adventurers when you're doing multiplayer. So although I've not tested it, I just can't imagine that it doesn't work uh, cross-platform. The last tab is help. That's for the tutorial. That takes about 10 minutes to play and it gives you some written bullet points to help you refresh your memory. We won't go through the tutorial because I can just play the game and uh, talk you through it. What a thing. So we'll do that now. Get into the gameplay. I really like the game. If you're not, if you never played stuff like Hero Quest, the board top games, there's been many, many moons since I played that. Uh, but if you never played games like that, maybe you're into stuff like XCOM these turn-based games so if you like if you like those games i think you're really going to like this as well so we can see we've got more adventures coming soon the demio action role-playing system so I look forward to see what the next chapter the next book is and you can see it's given me a selection of 
characters to choose from. I've got a melee character, a sorcerer, an assassin that likes to use traps and uh, backstabbing, and a hunter for ranged combat. Now, I'm going to get three of these characters, but if I specifically want one, then I'm going to choose that as my my particular character to guarantee they are in the game. So we can see I've got, that. well, the assassin's missing. We'll look at it. If you were hoping to have the assassin, no, not on this playthrough. So we'll just point out how I'm looking around the table. I'm grabbing it using the grip button so I can push away. As I'm gripping, I can pull myself in. I can use both of the grip buttons on both hands to spin, swivel around as I bring my hands apart. I can zoom in and zoom out. It works quite well. And we can nudge that thumbstick to tilt the table, get a more top-down view, if that's what you prefer. I can't stress this enough, though. You will hurt your neck. It takes quite a lot of time to play through the three levels of the dungeon. So really make sure you've got it um, in a comfortable position that you're not going to strain your neck. So it gets to actually playing. This is explained in the tutorial. When we see this box, this is my movement area for one action point. My turn is allowing me two action points. I can see these blue uh, diamonds. It's telling me I've got two points. So as I move my character as far as it'll move, we now see we've got one point left. We've got this little guy here. Uh, once I complete the first level, he will sell me cards or buy cards that I don't want off me which is very useful so we'll just do our second action point which is to open up the trap door into the dungeon the elven catacombs greet you with a distant wail of despair you steal yourselves and make ready to seek out the evil nemesis residing below so I'm not sure if you heard that but we have a, a like an ai dungeon master to tell us some story as we play so as I look around, I can see how far I can move. We've got these gas lamps, they're like traps that'll poison. There'll be explosive barrels, stuff like that around. We can see there's a door to open. I can pick up my characters, have a look at them, see what their stats are, how much attack damage they do. Look underneath them, it says Demio. Very well done. Character models. So let's, there's some gold there. If I collect that, that's going to be helpful if you want to buy cards at the end of the level so now we've opened up the door you see it's like a line of sight system we can see, there could be even more monsters hidden around the corner so i need to i need to be careful so what's going to be the best plan of attack i'll we'll move them forward and we'll see what we're dealing with we can pick these pieces up so the blue icons these are points of interest you can see there's a chest there if i open that up i'm going to get cards for my characters uh this one it might just be a font which heals everyone like a shrine so we'll pick up the characters we'll have a look what we're dealing with the monsters looks very cool let's see which ones are more deadly in their their abilities this little guy's got a key over his head we need to kill him to get that key to progress down to the next dungeon so he is uh, public enemy number one. That's who we definitely want to definitely want to take out. So I've got my sorcerer. I need to get him in line of sight to deal with these guys. As I move my hand over, we can see my cards. It's telling me I've moved, so I've got one action uh, point left. I can use a healing potion. That's zero action points to use, but everyone's fine. I've got area of attack spell, so a fireball or freeze it's giving me the stats the damage it will do uh, and we've got a zap now this card it refreshes every turn so it will do damage and stun a foe but maybe i want to damage lots of people all at once so we'll go for this group here detonate the poison barrel as well to poison them so i need to grab the dice we see it's got a sword a skull and cross swords. The cross swords means it'll be a critical hit, does more damage. Single sword is just a normal hit. If we land on that skull, we miss. So it's actually quite interesting if you miss, because you might hit one of your own characters, or you just could hit an enemy you weren't intending to hit. It's a little bit random. 
So we've cast our spell. They've all died. The poison helped. So now I've got my hunter. So I'll move them into line of sight. I also have an area of effect. Hail of arrows. We'll get other cards later. You can see as I'm killing them, I'm getting, we'll call it XP, uh, to go towards another card. So once I get to 100, I'll have another card added to the deck. So let's see how many of these guys I can hit. I hope we don't miss. So that's just a hit. So there was spider eggs there. We broke that and the, the eggs have hatched. My guardian's been weak and they're going to do less damage now. My spear is sharp and my shield is steady. So she has armor. So I can replenish that. That's a reusable card. So I've got a piercing throw, so that will go straight through in a line. So there's not really many of them queued up for that to make sense. I could do a whirlwind attack to multiple enemies at once. I think what we'll do move up and attack that's a hit I'll skewer you. and then we'll replenish our armor we think of this unit as a tank we want them to take most of the hits not our other characters so let's give this guy a zap we'll stun him it's critical so we'll do even more damage not all Enemy characters can be stunned or frozen with these effects. have to keep that in mind. We do want to move around the table and inspect the pieces. So we can see his stuns, goblin, chieftain, melee attack. And he can weaken our characters. All right, so I've got one more move. I think I'm just going to leave him there. Keep him out of range. We use our arrow. These are renewable. Get another two of them next turn. Have some steel. That's an elven archer. Get rid of these little spiders. Let's go here. Dan, take you. So we're building up to our next card. She can have a attack on the spider. We've missed. It's just as well none of my characters are near me because I could have accidentally hit them. Let's just go for another attack. For the guard. All right, we'll give him a zap. Let's grab that gold. So, 10 of 10. Let's hit him with some poison damage. That's a miss. That's a waste. How about some poison? Just hit him with an arrow then. See if we can get this to land. Find the target. Now it's the enemy. I will attack twice, I think. And then once more. Okay. So we'll give that guy a zap, stun him. We should be able to melee this guy and he'll be dead as long as we get the hit. I will destroy you. Let's use our arrows. Critical. Eat it. Monster type. Right, so we want to make our way towards the chest. Let's head back this way. 
grab this gold. Perhaps if you put them on the right spot. Time to move those enemies. So monsters turn. Kick open the chest. So panic powder, panic powder, teleportation, extra cards added. And we want to restore the armor. Grab our gold. Move on. Right. We should be able to open this door up. The enemy will be vanquished. Right, so this elven priest is summoning cultists. Let's move a little bit closer. Let's give our whirlwind attack a go. I will so that's a hit. You all. For the queen. All right, press on. Move near the door. I'm not going to open it just yet. Let's see what my hunter can see. Move them up. Is it here? Straight. It's leached some health. Healed himself by hurting me. Let's grab our character. Come on. There we go. That's critical. Refresh the armor. I'm sure, we're going to get hit. Push on a little bit. Go for this point of interest. Take the spider out at range. Should be able to get this guy as well. He's panicked. He's trying to run away. Won't save you. nest there. It's going to spawn more enemies. Right, let's move back. I know these guys don't attack, but they can teleport allies. Make life difficult for ourselves. Hit this guy with an arrow. We'll do that. Find the target. Okay. Monster. It's the monster's turn. Coming up behind us. Guy back here. For the king. So I'm going to make a move for this chest. Ice lamp, panic powder, and teleportation. All right, let's give this guy a hit. Critical. We 
filled up. So we got our extra card. Scroll of Charm. He's not in view yet. I could take... Have him on our side for a few turns. That would be useful. No, we're going to just use our arrows. That's a miss. We'll see what happens. My arrow was Didn't hurt any of our other characters, that's good. I should get a bit more luck this time. Straight. Critical. Death, take you. Move up. And again. Zap him. Bolt of lightning. Thunderbolt and lightning. Very, very frightening. Galileo Figaro. Right, let's move him. Grab some gold. So, nine out of ten points. Now, unable to do anything for one turn. Could take control of them for three turns. I'll just let's trigger the poison trap. And we'll hit him again. Just like protect Rob. All right, got another point of interest there. Let's move on. Give this guy a slap. Grab that gold. And then hit this guy. Critical. See that guy to hiss him, yeah. Bullseye. He's poisoned himself. Teleported a elemental in. He's leached some health. What should we do? We could make him panic. I should we put an ice trap down. I think we'll have our armor back. My plate and mail have been repaired. And give this guy a hit. Zap him. It's a critical. Give that guy a hit. Reports any tile of my choice. How about right to the chest? Right, so his charm, we don't have to worry about him. We will attack these guys instead. The critical. Do it again. 
again. So we'll zap this guy, and I know the next hit's going to kill the elven priest. It's the gas lamp on this guy. Oh, it's a miss. Open the chest. Gas lamp, adamant potion, repeating ballista. It's a trap we can place. Got a rat's nest there. We've got to do something about that. we do. I think we need to use a card. We'll just go for a melee attack. I'll give this guy a hit as well. A zap. As long as we get the hit, should kill him. Slap. Take that. Let's grab our gold. Press on. Seems like that elemental wants to come around this way. Hit this rat's nest. That's a miss. I'm lucky we didn't hit the hunter. Hopefully one more hit will do it and we'll get us a card maybe. All right, so he's weak, but that's okay. He's not really a melee character anyway. It's our sorcerer, so we can give it a zap. I'm sure many of you will want me to use the, the fireball or the freeze, but it's having the right moment to use it. I don't want to waste it. Skip his turn. A little too good. That's a hit. Okay, monster top. Whirlwind attack. Poison tip. Right. Give him a zap. Head up for the other point of interest, I think. This house on free. The enemy's turn. There's that elemental. My spear is sharp and my shield steady. Let's move them up to try and deal with the, the melee attacks. 
put this ballista out. Let them have a taste of this. So that's got its own health. It's going to take shots each turn. Is there anything else I want to do? Can we use the healing potion? I needed that. My aim is... Didn't mean to shoot at the ballista, but never mind. Let's try and put the card away. They've missed. They've slimed us. Just as well he was healed. Armour up. Not sure if we'll be able to stun this guy, but we'll see what happens. Of yeah, stunned. Frozen. So they're poisonous by acidic spit, spawn slime. Attack five. They're pretty dangerous. Makes me invulnerable for three turns. Just heal up. Skip the turn. Poison tip. Critical hit. How about some poison? Big damage there. Let's start ready. Let's open up the door. Cool. My turn, which means monster time. <gasps> attack. I will vanquish you all. Go back to the abyss. What else might we want to do? Let's just strike this guy. Trigger the poison as well. Got our hit. Give that guy a zap. There's our way out. He's out of view, so let's just grab the gold. Go for this goblin ranger. through here. Let's strike at him instead. Oh, I hit. We can heal. Oh, 
here are our hunter. Gold. So there's another point of interest down there, but that could just be a, a shrine or a font for healing us, not necessarily more cards. So they've got the key. This is locked. We're going to get 150 XP for completing the first level of the dungeon. Toes bizarre. So as I look at my cards, I think, oh, I don't, I don't really use you know, the, the gas trap. I can sell that for 55. I sell that by something else. So charge, rush forward, and knock all enemies out of your path. Cause enemies to flee in panic. Make a barricade. So block off a door. Stop the enemies coming through. That could be useful. Uh, the bones, we throw that. It does a little bit of damage and it just enrages them. We, we can guarantee that that enemy will attack the character that threw it. So we've got Heaven's Fury for 475. Enjoy. Area of Effect spell, we'll take that. Healing Ward's Earth helpful, we can take that. that card was surely eight. Idea. We've got 7 of 10 cards. We soon have 8 when we've filled that up. So that's how, that's how that works. It gives you an idea, guys, how the game plays. I do really, really like it. Uh, as far as content goes, maybe some people would be a little bit critical, but I think of it as chess. I play chess. It's always the same board, and it's always the same pieces. It's the same rules, and people have played that uh, yeah, since the dawn of time. Uh, but, yes, it would be nice that you know we've got more areas to explore and that's what they've said is coming in the future. Whether that's paid DLC or not, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it'd be nice to have different dungeons, maybe in forests and stuff like that. We'll just have to see what they come up with. But yeah, really enjoy it. Uh, okay, it's not that graphically demanding, but that does mean I can push the super sampling up on a headset and make it really sharp. They say a 1050 Ti or a GTX 960 will be enough to do this in VR, and I believe them. So uh, yeah. Now you know, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. We'll leave it there. Have a great day. Have a great evening, whatever you choose to do after watching this. And as always, I'll see you when I see you next. Ciao for now.